Imagine an open box is made by cutting a square uh, from each corner of a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of metal and then folding up the sides. How much should be cut off so that the box volume is 128 cubic inches? So let's try to get some explanation what's going on here. So we start off with this metal sheet uh, and the dimensions we are told in the first sentence here is that this is a metal square uh, that's 12 inches by 12 inches. So if we if we look at that, for example, this dimension down here is going to be 12 inches long. And then this dimension right here is going to be 12 inches as well. And so then it tells us that squares are cut off from each of the corners. So something like that. Do, 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 do. So we're cutting off these corners. And so once the corners are cut off, then we can use some type of, you know, shop tool to fold up these flaps. And then maybe, maybe we weld them together or somehow we would then fold up these flaps. So like this gets folded up, this gets folded up. And when you do that, you're then going to create a box. Like so. From the metal, in which case you can then see on the bottom, this square right here coincided with the original square. Then these flaps, like the flap on the front and the flap on the back, coincided with these right here. And then the flaps on the sides, this side, whoops, uh, this side and this side coincide with these flaps right here. So we fold up the box and make something like this. Um, uh, say it's an open box because it actually doesn't have a top. Uh, there's only five sides to this to this box here. One, two, three, four, and five. So there's just the five. That's what, that's what the word open is trying to describe in this situation. Great. Now, so this is how we're going to make it. So we have to decide how much do we cut off, right? How much should we cut off the box? And so really what we're saying here is there's some unknown value X that we need to cut off. And these all these little squares are going to be the same dimension here. So how much should we cut off to form this box? Well, we need the volume of the box to be 128 cubic inches. That's a measurement of volume. So if we think about the volume of a box, right, the fact that the top is missing really doesn't affect the volume whatsoever. That would affect the surface area, but it doesn't affect the volume. So we need that the volume is going to equal 128 cubic inches. But as this is a box, we also know that we have length times width times height. The volume should be their, their product, length times width times height. Now let's try to analyze what's going on here. So we have to connect these variables L, W, and H to the variable we actually care about. We need to connect it to this variable X. How much do we cut off from the box? Now notice that as you fold this flap up, the height of the box is actually going to equal this value X. So H is actually equal to X. That's great. Um, we're going to set up an equation in terms of our variable H. Now what about the length and width? Uh, so something to point out here is the length of this box is going to be this dimension right here for which it is related to x, right? Because if I take x plus l, and then I add another x to that, that's supposed to equal the whole dimension 12. So the thing is, if I take away the x's, that's how you get length. And so the length is going to equal 12 minus 2x. It's the whole length of 12 inches. Take away the two flaps of x. That's also true for w, right? w is going to be this dimension right here. And since this side was also 12 inches, we get that length and width are actually equal to each other. They're both 12 minus 2x. And so that gives, us an, that gives us a position where then we can set up our equation. We have that the height was x, the length was 12 minus 2x, and then the length, the width was also 12 minus 2x. This is equal to 120, 128 cubic inches. This polynomial equation is now what we need to solve. Um, and so notice that you have 12 minus 2x. Those are both divisible by 2. You can factor out a 2. And you can do that for the first factor and the second factor. So notice I write this as 4x times 6 minus x squared is equal to 128. Which, sure, we could divide both sides by 4. That's, that's nice right here. Divide both sides by 4. And so that gives us x times 6 minus x squared is equal to 32. Now to solve a polynomial equation, we're probably going to want to set the right side equal to 0 uh, because factoring, trying to factor factors of 32 is not as effective as finding factors of 0 because 
there are a lot of different ways of factoring 32, many of which do not involve fractions or whole numbers. Uh, so we really do need to set the right-hand side equal to zero. So we get x times six minus x squared minus 32 equals zero. We need to expand this right here, x minus, uh, six minus x squared, for which you can just FOIL it, x minus six times x minus six. You can also just use the binomial theorem, which would tell us this is gonna be 36 minus two times six x plus x squared minus 32 equals zero. Uh, then, working that a little bit more, we get 36 minus 12x plus x squared minus 32. I'm going to distribute the x now, so we then are going to get an x cubed minus 12x squared plus 36x minus 32 equals 0. So now this is the polynomial equation that we need to solve right here. And so normally, you know, if I was approached with a polynomial equation like this, I'd probably use a calculator or some, some t uh, technology of some kind to solve this for me because solving polynomial functions can be very, very difficult. Now, the good news for us is that I did pick coefficients that we could solve purely algebraically uh, using techniques we've seen before. So if we look at the possible rational roots, we need to look at factors of negative 32. Uh, this is going to give us 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. Um, I'm ignoring negative possibilities because I can't cut off a negative amount on the, I can't cut a negative amount off of my square. So it's got to be a positive number. So if there are negative roots, don't care. They're not going to solve this problem. I need to have some positive ones. Uh, never really like to try something too big. So maybe something in the middle, like four might be a good place to get started. So if we try doing some synthetic division with that. So right now my coefficients, one, negative 12, 36, and negative 32. If we tried four, whoops, we bring down the one, one times four is four, minus 12 is negative eight, times four is negative 32, like so, uh, plus 36 is positive four, times that by four, we're gonna get 16, which is gonna give me a negative 16. Not quite there yet, um, so four didn't work. I'm actually gonna erase these numbers. Four didn't work. Um, it wasn't necessarily too big, we could try something else, you know, we could try something like maybe eight. Uh, let's try that because again, we didn't get we didn't get indicated that four is too big. So if I'm playing this hot and cold game, I'll try try eight here. So you have one times eight is eight minus twelve is negative four times that by eight. You're going to get negative thirty two again, um, and which adds up to thirty six to give you four. And then four times eight is thirty two, which then you go then we found our root right there. So our polynomial can factor as x minus 8, that's one possibility, and then we get x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. So we need to find factors of 4 that add up to be negative 4. Actually, this is a perfect square trinomial. Uh, this factors as x minus 2, quantity squared there, uh, equals 0. So it looks turns out that we have potentially two feasible answers. We have x equals 2 and we have x equals eight. Does the fact that x equals two, the fact that it's a repeated root, does that have much effect here? Really not so much. We're just looking for the two numbers here, two and eight, okay? The fact we really got a square kind of had to do with the fact that the base of this box is gonna be a square. Now, which is which was the right answer, two or eight? Does it, does it matter? Maybe they're both answers. Now, one thing you have to think about it would be sort of like the following situation, right? Um, if x equals two, if x equals two, you're gonna get, 12 minus, well, let's actually plug it in there. You get 12 minus 4, right, which would give you 8. So the bottom would be 8. The side would also be 8. And then the, type, the top would be 2 there. So we're talking about this 8 by 8 by 2 box, which that does give us 128 uh, cubic inches as the bottom. That's great. What about 8? If we tried 8, you'd get 16, or excuse me, 12 minus 16, which is actually equal to negative 4. Hmm, that's kind of weird. Uh, how, do you have, how do you have negative four inches going on here? This would also turn out to be negative four inches. And then the thing is you could take negative four times negative four times eight. That gives you 128 as well. So the thing is, the domain of this problem does not include eight. Uh, so here, this, this answer, the eight by eight by two, that's coming about because x was two inches. We want to cut off two from the square. And so we have to, when you have a story problem, it's very critical we analyze 
whether our answer even makes sense. And that often comes down to the domain of the problem right here. Uh, so I would argue that x equals 8 is infeasible. Because after all, how much can you actually cut off from these things? So in some respect, if we ask the domain of this problem, x has to be something non-negative. You could potentially cut off nothing, right? Um, in which case your volume would be zero. It would just be flat, right? So really, really, you know, we should probably say it's strictly greater than zero. That's not going to be a possibility. Uh, if, 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 because again, you cut off nothing, but how big could you get it? Well, like as X gets bigger and bigger, 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 you're also getting bigger, bigger, bigger on the other side. So at some point they're going to basically meet in the middle, right? And so basically there's going to be this point where you cut off four corners and then there's nothing left. Um, that would be halfway across. So this would be X equals six. And so the domain of this problem is going to be zero to six. And that's the issue that happened here. We found a solution eight to the polynomial equation that lives outside the domain of our story problem. And so therefore we had to discard it, which then tells us that X equals inch. What, what, what is that talking about? X equals two inches. That's what it was supposed to say. X equals two inches is the answer we need to go with here. We need to cut off two inches from the square to get uh, a box that's 128 cubic inches.